Hey guys, in this video I'm just going to do a quick explanation of how you would utilize the numbers that I, or like the settings that I show in my videos. Um, so some people, you know, they'll just comment down below like, hey, these settings didn't work for me. Um, so I'm just going to pretty much explain the process that you would use in order to get these numbers to work for you. Because um, obviously every GPU is different and they require slightly different numbers. Every system is different uh, and can actually sometimes affect what numbers the card can handle uh, due to what else is on the system. <coughs> so yeah, we've got numbers here for the 6700 XT mining ETH. Uh, this has been a pretty popular video for my channel. 2700 views might be my second most viewed video. Um, so yeah, just going to go through how you'd utilize these numbers. Um, so first of all, uh, you would start off with the core clock and the memory clock and the SOC frequency. Those are set numbers and they will pretty much be all the same for every GPU that you try this on. Every uh, GPU of the same model. Um, whereas the millivolt settings will be uh, different for every GPU. Um, there is some circumstances where the memory clock or the core clock could be different. Uh, for, for example, some 6700 XTs can still get low on the SEC, SOC VDD max when they're at 1074, but pretty much you're just going to be copying those settings. Um, like with NVIDIA GPUs, you can just copy copy people's settings one for one, and it'll pretty much work fine first time. <coughs> but these extra settings that we've got, all the millivolt settings, uh, like the core voltage, memory controller voltage, uh, memory voltage and SOC VDD max, uh, they're all going to be a little bit harder. So what you want to start with is just one of them. So you run the card first at the core clock, the memory clock and the SOC freak uh, and just make sure that it runs. Um, if you've got any issues there then there's something else wrong. Um, also for this one you need R mode enabled uh, so you need to be t using Team Red Miner as well. This won't work on any of the other miners, by the way. Um, the settings will be different than what you need. Uh, Team Black Miner is quite close, so you might uh, be stable with these settings on Team Black Miner, but um, more than likely you're going to need different settings for any other miner, uh, and Team Red Miner is the most efficient. Um, so what you're going to do with the voltage settings is start with a number a bit higher than the number that I've got. So say 630 or 640 on the core voltage and you're going to just go over and change yours to 640. Uh, you would have all these uh, gone. So just like that. <coughs> and you'd run it just like that. I'm not actually going to change the settings on here because then I'll crash my rig and I'll have to reboot it. But um, yeah, you want to start with just one and go slightly above. And then reboot your rig. Every time you change a setting, you have to reboot the rig because uh, AMD GPUs just don't like settings being changed while they're mining. You can stop the miner, just hit stop miner. And then once you've changed a setting, hit restart miner. But it's very risky because um, you can get into a situation where it'll mine fine when you load up the miner when it's not mining and then you hit start miner or you apply the flight sheet afterwards <coughs> but if it crashes and reboots itself I uh, will get into a crash loop and won't be able to get out of it so just reboot every time you change a setting um, uh, so next you would probably core voltage and SOC VDD max are the two most important ones so after doing core voltage you'd probably do SOC VDD max this one has a bigger range, so you can go quite high with SOC VDD max without crashing the rig. Like um, with the core voltage, if you go above like probably like 680 uh, with that current core clock, you'll probably crash the rig. Um, but you don't have to worry about that really with the SOC VDD max. This can go all the way up to a thousand and it won't crash. So uh, when you're taking steps up on the core voltage, you take smaller steps like 10, 20. When you're taking steps up on the SOC VDD Max, you can go big. I'd probably go like 840 and then see if that's stable. Um, if that's stable, um, you can either work it down from there or go on 
and put the other settings in first, which is probably the way I'd do it, and then start working that one down after. So reboot it when it's at 840, it's all running well, getting a little bit more efficient. Next up, memory controller voltage. This one probably has the least effect, so you probably put it in maybe like 620, 610, 620, just like 10 or 20 above where I've got it in my video. Uh, and yeah, reboot it if it's fine. Uh, carry on with the next one. Obviously at any point, if it's not fine, increase the number that you just put in. So yeah, memory, memory voltage there. Chuck it in at like 1250, 1260. Um, so yeah, 20, 10 to 20 above, somewhere around there. Uh, and then again, reboot it. Next, what you're gonna do after that is start working downwards. So what we have put like 630 on the uh, core voltage and then try go for a slightly higher number. Uh, uh, sorry, a slightly lower number, so 620. Um, reboot that, if it crashes, obviously move it up. If it doesn't, change it down and reboot again. Um, obviously 619 was where I was uh, stopped at this one, but uh, you, you may even be able to go lower, so don't be afraid to test lower numbers than what I've got. Uh, memory controller voltage honestly doesn't matter that much. Moving it down like 50 might save you one watt. So <coughs> it's not the most important one to be tuning down. Um, but yeah, the SOC VDU Max is an important one to tune down. Um, and is also like the stability number. So if you have instability after you've set all these numbers, if there's any instability, increase SOC VDD Max. Um, yeah, so work that one down as much as you can get it. Uh, probably 20 at a time. When you start getting close to the end, go 10 at a time. Uh, going five at a time, you're not really uh, doing a whole lot because I think it's like one every seven millivolts is like a step. So even if you say reduced it like three or four millivolts, it's probably not going to do anything like at all um, because it operates in steps. But yeah, either way, just like work down like 10 or 20 on the SOC BDD Max until you get a crash and then revert to the last setting that was stable. And then, yeah, do that with all the other ones, memory voltage, memory controller voltage, core voltage, SOC, VDD max, and then you'll be left with an efficient card. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you've got uh, vastly different results to what I have, just leave a comment underneath whatever video it is, like if you know, whatever cards you've got and then whatever uh, coin you're mining, I've probably got, well, I've got heaps of videos, so whichever one relates most to that, just chuck it in the comments and ask me a question, you know? Uh, and I hopefully will be able to help. Um, yeah, models do vary in the numbers that they accept. So you might actually have like a crazy higher number, like you might need 900 on the SOC VDD Max or something, something weird like that. Like cards vary a lot. I've got a card here which can't go above like 1055 or 1060 or so on the memory clock. Uh, the rest of my 6700s go to 1073. So there are weird things like that where certain cards can't do things that other cards can. So yeah, be aware of that and just work with what works. You know, if you like put a number into core voltage and it just completely crashes, like no matter what number it is, like you try 620, 650, 680, 700 and everything just crashes it. That's all good. Just leave it blank for now and then just work on all the others first. <coughs> uh, especially if you have a higher core, core clock, like you're for some reason working off a different core clock you'll definitely have a different core voltage and stuff like that um, same with the memory uh, clock and memory voltage but yeah it's pretty much copy the numbers uh, for the clocks and get as close to the numbers for the millivolt settings yeah so hopefully that helps some people who are trying to apply the numbers that I show in my videos you might not be able to get as low you might be able to get lower so it's all depends on luck really um so yeah good luck good luck applying these settings and have a great day so yeah